My name is Njideka Kunyele Crosby and I am a visual artist. My dad always had, um, always bought Time magazine and Newsweek, and I just remember I would flip through it, and if I found an image I liked, I'll get a piece of paper and some charcoal, and I'll make a copy of it. So the interest in drawing has always been there. I was a biology major at Swarthmore, and by my senior year, I had taken so many art classes, I needed just like two more art classes to major. Art was so much more than I had ever thought about. It was something you could use to talk about your life, your dreams, your past, your future, the state of the world, politics, the society. That was a game changer for me, just seeing how impactful and profound art has been, is, can be. I still wasn't sure if I wanted to be an artist because I had wanted to be a doctor for so long. Even though I didn't want to be an artist, I really enjoyed doing it. It was the one thing like when I did Time Could Vanish, I was already with my noun husband at that point. We had just started dating and he was encouraging me to consider doing art. So it just felt like people were pushing me to it, but I couldn't see it for myself. I graduated and I went back to Nigeria for a year. And it was a year to kind of let me think about what I wanted to do, if I wanted to give this art thing a try. And then when I was in Nigeria, so this was 2004 to 2005, it was a really exciting period because I had left Nigeria in 99 and it felt like the Nigeria I came back to that year was radically different from the country I had left. The country I grew up in was a country where there was a lot of like looking outside for inspiration. And then going back in 2004, there was this incredible shift where people were beginning to look inwards. Um, there was also just this creative renaissance happening. It was so palpable to me that something really exciting was shifting in the country. So the show at Yale and then the Huntington, the Hilton All Series and Jadek Akunili Crosby, I got an invitation saying that Hilton was working on this series and would I want to be a part of it? And it was an immediate yes, because Hilton is incredible. And I knew from the start that it was going to be at Yale and the Huntington. And I, I liked the implication of both, showing at the Yale Center for British Art, thinking of the connection between the United Kingdom and Nigeria, which I touch upon in my work sometimes. I'm also having gone to Yale for grad school and then having the work travel to the Huntington where they have these paintings done by artists and in traditions that I studied at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. It felt like a, a nice tie-in. I've always been slow with my production, but I've become even slower since I had kids. When I'm making a work, I have an idea of what I want of it, but it's not very clear. I love just searching and finding things. So I think it's something I love to do naturally that I've pulled into my work. So it's not the making of it that takes time. 
it's trying to find the plant that goes in front of the two figures. Looking at thousands of plants, I didn't find anything online. Going to Huntington, walking around to get the right plant. Or um, there's a, a piece with the screen wall and the plant in front of it. I knew I wanted it to be this West African almond tree. I reached out to an artist friend of mine in Nigeria who connected me with a photographer. And he ended up sending about 1,300 pictures of fruit trees before I like fell. I was like, okay, this is the one I want. By the time I got the plant itself, it took like two days to draw it, but it took about three months to get the fruit tree that I wanted. For me, the work is in the process. My drive or my benchmark for success has always been constant. I want to make work I'm proud of. I want to make work that engages with the work of the people I admire. And I'm incredibly critical of my work and what I do. So my mom, she always said, our wants are many, but our needs are few. And I really believe it. I just don't desire a lot of, <laughs> because I grew up in a very simple life. Um, I spent summers in the village, you know, like bare bone, no electricity, you entertain yourself. So I think I'm, I just, I totally understand that you don't need a lot of things. And so I don't have that need to like chase the money. So like if I want to choose the color of a wall, I will take a picture of the work, put it in Photoshop, select that area and go through like the 10 options I have in my head. And I will print them out. I will look at them upside down. I will look at them for multiple days. So by the time I make, I'll send them to my friends who I trust. I will send them to my husband who I trust. So by the time I make a decision, I feel like this could not be any other color but the color I picked. My teacher Randy always said, with a really good composition, you should not be able to take off like an inch of it without ruining the whole thing. But I never start off thinking I want to make a beautiful piece. So within the work, the images I transfer, some of them come from my family photos. Some of them are photos from my family from when my parents were young, from when my siblings and I were young, but also starting in about 2009. Every time I went back to Nigeria, I'll take my camera and I'll just take a ton of pictures. Nigeria in the 80s and 90s was such an exciting place. And not all positive. We also lived through military dictatorship that whole time. Um, but it was a time where there's like really strong shared like a memory, especially around cultural things, because we had just one TV station and it ran from five till eight. So Everybody in the country watched the same TV. So it's like, there's something very entertaining about tapping into those shared memories. And so with my work, I feel there's so much of it that is rooted in 
um, like the traditions of painting I learned at the Pennsylvania Academy that most people who are invested in painting can enjoy the work and enjoy all this knowledge that I've brought to the piece. But when a Nigerian is looking at it, it's a whole lot of experience and that's okay. Everybody doesn't have to have this same experience. And I also think there is something I like about having moments in the work that center Nigerians in a way, not a lot of work center them. This is a piece that just got started a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's a plant piece. So this is a silhouette of two plants superimposed on each other and all the negative spaces are taped off. And within the silhouette of the two plants together is going to be a transferred picture of um, me with my sister, the one who is just a little over a year older than me, and this person who is from a Vlisco ad. And so when I went to graduate school, when this work really got developed, I mean, I knew the tradition I studied would always be a part of me, but I was also looking for a way to signal a difference from it. And working on paper was such a small move I felt could do that. So I love that the work exists between printmaking, drawing, um, collage, and painting. And that for me undergirds a bigger theme of the work, which is this like thinking of my life and making references to growing up in a town, spending a lot of time in the village with my grandmother, going to boarding school in a big city of Lagos, and then moving to the United States after when I was 16, and trying to touch up on all those different places in the work, and thinking of myself as somebody who is a hybrid of all that. And with the clips, I don't want this to feel too precious. I want people to feel they can really come up close to it and really move across the, the page. Thinking of this like cultural renaissance that has been happening for over a decade now and this looking inward and almost like a reset of Nigerian mindsets from this like post-colonial mentality of what we have is not enough, which is what my parents were raised in and in that generation there was so much of shame around cultural things like people stopped teaching their children the languages because people genuinely felt like speaking Igbo makes your kids dumb like that's what being colonized does to you um so then going to my generation where there's this like realizing all that is lost and trying to pick up what's left and just kind of like realizing the lies of that and how beautiful things are in the culture and tradition. I just felt like the place I grew up in, the experiences I had, it mattered in a way I felt people outside the country didn't know or couldn't see or didn't care about. I wanted to make work that showed like you know, we're, we're known for the, the, a lot of the negative things, but there is a lot of beauty and coolness here mixed with the many negative things. But also it's just like, um, it matters. Our lives matter, our history, our loves, loss, all of it, it, it matters. And I wanted to capture it in my work.